uh, Nebraska, the good life. Home of the Cornhuskers and Arbor Day. So I'm back home for the holidays at my parents' house and I brought my telescope with me and I thought I would try to do some imaging. So what does a whole month in Nebraska look like in terms of astrophotography? Well, let's find out. It starts with a flight from New York City, where I currently reside, to my parents' house in Lincoln, Nebraska. Here we have bison, statues of Native Americans, and a state capitol building, which we lovingly call the Penis of the Plains. We also have wide open fields full of stars at night. My parents live on the outskirts of the city, so we kind of straddle a Bortle 5 to 6 sky. If I were to go even a half mile further out, I'd easily be under Bortle 4. However, it's the middle of winter, there's cold, and then there's Nebraska cold. So I'll make do with a little more light pollution if that means I can stay warm inside the house. So on this trip, I brought with me a portable astro rig suitable for travel. This includes my trusty Red Cat 51 telescope, my ASI Air, filter wheel with L Enhance and L Pro filters, all sitting on top of a Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, and also a lot of duct tape. Now for the mount, I added a wedge that converts the AZ GTI into an equatorial mount. Also, the built-in wireless feature means no EQ mod cable needed, and I can control it through my ASI Air, which I'll go over later in the video. I also ditched the standard tripod that comes with the AZ GTI mount because it wouldn't fit in my suitcase. Um, I swapped it out for a video tripod I had laying around and that seems sturdy enough. The first clear night came pretty much the day after I landed in Nebraska, so I jumped on the chance to do some imaging. With my Bortle 5 sky, there were so many more visible stars out than compared to Bortle 9 New York City. Now, unfortunately, my guiding was so bad that night that I had to ditch my imaging altogether. It's the first time using this AZ GTI mount, so I expected to run into some setbacks. My deck axis was all over the place, and the ASI Air kept pausing the imaging auto run in order to let the guiding settle, which it never did. So the next day, I made a few changes. Instead of the standard 2.5 pound counterweight, I opted to bring my 5 pounder that came off my EQM35 mount. Now unfortunately, this counterweight hole is much bigger than the counterweight shaft, so I think the weight would rotate awkwardly as the scope was tracking, and that would throw guiding off. As a quick fix, I wrapped the shaft in duct tape to give it a little more, well, shall we say, girth to improve gripping. Uh, I found this actually kind of helped. I obviously don't recommend doing this unless you're in a pinch and far away from home, which I certainly was. Calibrating my guider right now. It's going through uh, the different calibration steps here. It's going to take a little while. How's that for a focus? That's just about perfect right there. So none of my targets really worked out. I've pointed it to the Horsehead Nebula. My guiding is still erratic, but a little bit under better under control. Um, we're going to see what we get here. If my guiding stays fairly consistent, then I may just stay on the Horsehead Nebula for um, for tonight and try to get as much data as possible. Oh, 
Well, that's, uh, I need to rotate my, oh crap. For the rest of my imaging sessions, my gutting was still not great, but it never got so bad that I had to completely cancel the session. Now what also really helped was using a wide field imaging scope like my Red Cat 51. I found it was really forgiving of bad guiding. The stars weren't as deformed as it could have been. So my first target I shot was the Bubble Nebula, which uh, it didn't turn out so great. It's just not an ideal target for the Red Cat. I fared way better with my second target, the California Nebula. I got 3.5 hours of data on it, and it was really high up in the sky, so there was less atmosphere to shoot through. Coupled with the Elenhan's narrowband filter, in my opinion, I ended up with a stunning image of the nebula. So taking a small break from deep sky imaging, I got to witness two amazing astronomical events during the month of December. While I was here, I shot my first meteor shower, the Geminids. I used a free app called Photopills to find out the peak hour to shoot and then drove to a location that I thought would have a nice foreground. Um, now because my DSLR broke a few months ago, I had to shoot with just my smartphone, which is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. All right, so it is uh, 12.17 a.m. And uh, I just set up my camera. I'm out here at Wilderness Ridge in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's overlooking a cute little pond. It's kind of scenic. I'm out of breath because it's it's very cold outside. It is, uh, I don't know if you can see my watch, but it is 12 degrees out. I'm freezing my Astro off. So I've got my camera set up using nightcap um, and set it in meteor mode. So I'm just gonna let it run for about an hour or so. Um, I've got my iPad with me. I'm just gonna watch some YouTube videos while I wait inside the car. I, while I was setting up, um, I actually did see one meteor um, come down. It was pretty cool, it was really bright. And uh, luckily I caught that one. It'll be interesting to see how many meteors I catch. It's kinda, kinda like fishing, like fishing for meteorites. All right, you guys, so I just checked my phone after about 10 minutes. I caught about 21 meteors already. Uh, I feel like I'm fishing. This is kind of amazing. So I'm really looking uh, forward to the final product. So we'll see. We're going to check, see where we're at. Ooh, 77 meteors. Nice. So I think, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. It's really cold. I'm really tired. After going through the frames, I didn't have nearly as many as it reported, but I still had several, which allowed me to make this composite, which I'm really proud of. As an added bonus, I also caught this single meteor against these very pretty holiday trees. So I went from a once in a year event to capturing a once in a lifetime event, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my planetary scope with me, so I had to make do with what I had, my small wide field Red Cat 51. I did bring my planetary camera with me, so that helped a bit. Um, I'm really still happy with what I shot. Back to deep sky imaging. So tonight I'm imaging the North America Nebula. Uh, this is just a preview image here, but I'm going to take a look and see what a five minute exposure looks like. But right now, as you can see, there's some pretty good detail here. This is only a 60 second shot. It's, a, it's in bin four. Um, I'm shooting in bin one. Oh crap, I forgot to set the camera cooler on. I need to do that as well. And my guiding, as you can see here is a uh, it's decent, it's not great, but you know, I'll take it. It's under one right now, which is way better than what I've been getting. I've got an Ellen Hance filter on as well. Um, here we go. 
Moment of truth. Oh, yes, look at that. Holy cow. That is some good detail. I don't know if my stars are bloated or if that's just what it looks like, but holy, that's just one five minute image. I'm loving it. So that about wraps up my month in Nebraska. There were a lot of cold nights and equally cold mornings. I was able to shoot several targets. You know, some didn't turn out so great like the bubble and the crab nebula and some smaller galaxies and others, well, exceeded my expectations. And after a month in Nebraska, it was time to head back home, back to light polluted New York City. But oh, what beautiful light pollution it is. And sitting here in my apartment, I think about my trip back home and how special it was. From experiencing those dark skies and those crazy Nebraska sunsets, looking out at all that open land and sky that served as a blank canvas for all my dreams growing up, and, of course, all the targets I shot and astronomical events I got to witness. It was all truly special. But what really made it special for me was that I simply got to share my astrophotography with the ones I love. Hey, Dad. Come here, I want to show you something really quick. Come here, I want to show you something really quick. Oh, oh. hey there. That's the moon. Wow. What do you think? Mom, come here. Come here, real quick, come quick. Look. See? Yeah. Yeah. Is that there? Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah.